Good morning, everyone. Dr. Vicki here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center. Uh, today is June 6th, which means we are having a 6 6 portal reading, as I do on every of the double uh, days. Um, and uh, this one is going to, I think, be a little bit shorter than, than the rest because uh, yesterday, Ona and I did a Moon Shadows episode on um, the new moon in um, in Gemini, which actually happens today on the 6-6 portal. So I will mention it, but I won't get into it too deeply if you want a more expanded look at the new moon associated with the 6-6 portal. You can check out my Moon Shadows episode. It is on my channel. We do Moon Shadows on my channel and we do Moonshine, which is the episode for the full moon. Uh, on Ona's tarot. So you can check that out at your leisure. So uh, we're going to go to the numerological significance of the six, six portal. We're going to look at it from the perspective of the tree of life. And we are going to look at a little bit of astrology. And then I'll do a reading on the six, six portal. So uh, let's Let's get started with that. Before actually, before that happens, I want to welcome all my new subscribers. I know many of you uh, have uh, been uh, have watched me for years, um, or have w watched me years ago. And um, I did do a video on the Republican Party, just a card reading, quick card reading, and uh, I noticed a lot of people said, uh, "Oh, you're here, you're back." Um, I never left. <laughs> I was always here. Um, but I did less tarot and more um, astrology and Kabbalah. And I've done actually a lot of astrology and Kabbalah on the people that are in the headlines now. So if you want to check out my channel for um, uh, people like uh, MTG or uh, Alexandria Casio cortez or Jasmine Crockett or Merrick Garland um, or Donald Trump, for that matter, I did a whole series on um, the making of, of the monster that is Trump. And I think it's called, um, oh, I forget the name of it, but anyway, it's it's on the channel so you can check that out. So let's, without further delay, oh, and thank you. And hi to all my tried and trues, thank you. All right, let's get moving. It's very early this morning, so I'm a little, I don't have a script. So this comes right off the top of my head and the top of my head just got off the pillow, as you can probably tell. So, all right, let's get moving. Okay, let's take a look at the portal 466. Now, uh, we are in the, um, today is January 6th, 2026. I'm sorry, 2024, as I said, it's early in the morning. My apologies. <laughs> when we add the numerological value of 6-6-2024, I remember that 2024 is an eight-year vibration, as you so, so shall you read. And uh, we add the month of June to that, we get a 20, the 20 over two vibration. First of all, two is a vibration of sensitivity. Two is an emotional number, considered an emotional number. And so people who have twos prominent in their chart are very sensitive. And so this is in its way, a very sensitive time for us. Whenever you add a zero to a number, it's considered the God force. And so it raises that number to a higher vibration. And so that can mean we're extraordinarily sensitive today, something that you might want to take into consideration as we look at uh, the other things that are happening today. And then just even if you're not looking from an astrological perspective, you can see what's going on in the world, which is pretty intense. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So the 20 over two on the tree of life is located on a path that connects the sephirah and Sephiroth is considered em the em Sephiroth means emanation. Okay, it's sort of a, uh, a an emanation of light, and this Sephiroth, um, the uh, the orange one here, is associated with this with the planet Mercury. Now we have a little symbol of Gemini here, 
Uh, and of course, Mercury is in Gemini at this time. And the path connects the Sephiroth of Mercury with the path of the Earth, with the Sephiroth of the Earth. Now, the Earth at this point is in Sagittarius. How is that? Well, the Earth is always exactly opposite the Sun. And right now, the Sun is in is in Gemini. And so the, the polarity of the sun is Sagittarius. So as we have uh, the sun, Mercury, and also Venus, and also um, the moon, and also Jupiter, all in Gemini, uh, there's a lot of information coming in at this time. Now, the path of the 20 over two is actually connected to the planet Pluto, according to the tree of life and Pluto right now is in the sign of Aquarius. Now on the tree of life, Pluto resides in the uppermost Sephiroth. This is Kether, the crown. Uh, it corresponds to our crown chakra, our connection to spirit. And in Kether, we find both Pluto and Neptune, but I only put the sign for Pluto because it, this is a Pluto day. The 20 over two is always a Plutonic day. Now, if we look at where um, Pluto is in the chart right now, what degree is Pluto at? Pluto is actually at two degrees of Aquarius. It's presently uh, retrograde, moving uh, uh, back uh, to the to the first degree of Aquarius, and then it will um, dip its toe back into its last little dip into Capricorn from the first of September to the twenty of November. So that period of time, we will have Pluto back in Capricorn in the last degree of Capricorn. But as this portal is, is, is here today and opening today, it we are still we still have Pluto in Aquarius. So two degrees of Aquarius, according to the Sabian symbols, uh, the symbol is an unexpected thunderstorm. Even though we want to cement our lives into secure structures, Nature always wins in the end. Submission to unforeseen and uncontrollable forces. And uh, the uh, I, I actually, the Sabian symbols, um, I have two sources for the Sabian symbols. One is Dane Rudger's book, uh, The Sabian Symbols, a 360 degree mandala. And also the website, James Burgess, uh, Sabian Mysteries website, uh, who really explores that. So you can check that out. I find it an invaluable um, resource. But life is ephemeral, right? And so there are no guarantees. Now, <clears throat> as we look at this uh, symbology of the tarot card associated with the 6-6 portal, we have the judgment card, right? The judgment card. And the judgment, there's a certain uh, inevitability around the judgment card, something has to happen. We come to a point where something is uncovered. And when we look at this particular uh, tarot card, I believe this is from the uh, Arcanum deck. This is the this is the judgment card from the Arcanum deck. And uh, we see the angel blowing his horn. This is the angel Gabriel. And we see people rising up. In some decks, they're rising out of coffins. In the right away deck, the, this, the, we see uh, a man, a woman, and a child rising up out of a coffin. The coffin symbolizes our physical, um, our physical experience, right? From the, from you know, from what's that expression? Something to the grave. We have a certain amount of time. Uh, it is a, it is a, we, we do sort of live in a box as, as when we live on planet earth here. And sometimes we can get very involved in the day to day, the mundane of living and, and struggling in many cases on how to move through this or sort of very dense environment as spirits, because we are all spirits. We start as spirit and we incarnate into this physical environment and through that physical environment through that incarnation, we create a personality or an ego that helps us to um, walk through this world. And the judgment card is a reminder to us that yes, we are our physical body. Yes, we are our personality. Yes, we are our ego. And those things are all sort of necessary for us to function. 
But beyond that, we are spirit. We are connected to spirit and we are being reminded. And so the judgment card is somewhat of an uncovering of our true self. But usually it comes through a trumpet blare. So a big loud noise that wakes us up. And one of the things I, I like to say with this card just in general, and then just in general about waking up, is depending on how deep of a sleep you are in, just like if you're sleeping very deeply in your bed and the alarm goes off, it can stun you awake. And I know we've all experienced this, the, the alarm goes off or maybe a fire alarm goes off or a smoke alarm goes off in the middle of the night, right? Um, you wake up and you're disoriented. If you happen to be in a semi-sleep, you'll wake up and you'll be pissed off because like, what's going on? I need my sleep. Um, and and so, but you you get up and you have to attend to what the alarm is asking us to do. And then some of some people are already awake and they smell the smoke or they know that, you know, six o'clock in the morning is rolling around and it's going to be time to get out of bed. And so depending on your level of awakeness, awokenness or wokeness, as they say, or your level of how deep in the sleep uh, and, and the mystery that you are part of something greater that you maybe you are asleep to will depend on how people respond to this. So everybody will respond at their own level of awareness. And uh, so we need to have a lot of compassion for each other, I think. All right, so let's take a look at the astrology. Now, I just um, I just picked uh, 6 6 at 6, uh, I think 6 6 in the morning. And this is an Aries rising chart. Um, so just to see where the energy lies in this 6 6 portal uh, from a purely archetypical astrological perspective. And we can see here that there is a ton of, or a, well, there's another expression we use in New Jersey um, that begins with an S, load of uh, energy in the sign of Gemini. Now, a couple of things happened at the end of uh, March, um, excuse me, at the end of May, had the right letter, had the wrong month. At the end of May, Jupiter moved into Gemini after spending a year in um in Taurus. Before it left Taurus, however, it did make a conjunction to Uranus, which started a synodic cycle, which runs about, I think, 13 years. That cycle runs 13 years between Uranus and uh, Jupiter. And that was uh, an awakening. Jupiter expands and Uranus awakens. So, it, so many of us, even from that experience, are already sort of semi-awake in, in, and, you know, and now we're like, well, okay, we're awake. What do we have to see? And uh, we have uh, Jupiter and Gemini. We also have Mercury and Gemini, which is significant because Mercury is the ruler of Gemini. So Mercury and Gemini, it is in a conjunction to Jupiter. They had their synodic cycle, which is a year long cycle between Jupiter and, and Mercury that began um, on the second. It was the second uh, at um, at three degrees of um, of Gemini. We also just recently on the second had a conjunction of the Sun and um, Venus. We can see how close the Sun and Venus is. So the Sun and Venus just came off uh, their Cassimi with Venus in the heart of the Sun. And now we have the new moon. So we have one, two, three, four, five planets of generally I work with the 10 major planets. Um, I will I will sometimes include Eris in there uh, and the like, but the, the, the classical, we'll call them the classical 10 planets, five of them are in Gemini. And I do want to point out that the sign of Gemini, even the symbol of Gemini, it, it looks like a new Roman numeral too, but to me, it also looks like a gateway. And you can see I have my Gemini painting up there and uh, it is a gateway. And and as I said uh, with Oni yesterday, when we were talking about the new moon in Gemini, um, Gemini energy to me always feels like uh, 
a, a portal of some sort. And of course, Gemini is a sign of duality and we live in a dual existence and the understanding of that. Okay. The understanding of opposites, the understanding of separation in order to come back together. And so we are at this time seeing perhaps just how separated we are. And now it's time for us to move back together because ultimately we move back into unity. Uh, we also have the North node of the moon, which is the direction of our evolution in the sign of Aries. It's been very active, especially when all the planets were in Aries. Uh, we still have Mars in Aries. So Mars is the ruler of that North node. And Mars is very close to a planet called Eris. Now, I don't have Eris in this particular picture, but Eris is at about 26 degrees of uh, Aries. So Mars just made her uh, his conjunction to Eris. Eris is a, um, a minor planet. It is out in the uh, Kuiper belt, the same place where Pluto was found, but it is about twice as far away as Pluto from, from the uh, sun. Pluto takes about 248 years to go around the sun, where Eris takes 500 plus years to go around the sun. So it's pretty far out there. It was just discovered back when uh, George W. Bush was president in the early 2000s. And Eris is an archetype of rebellion and an archetype of uh, the pissed off feminine. Um, and so we can see that uh, as part of, uh, we can see how many folks are um, pissed off at this time, we could say, uh, how many women, uh, attacks on women, attacks on women's rights. We can even see a lot of these war zones where most of the people suffering are women and children. So it's very much a real life Thing, may perhaps not for us in the country that I live in, although our rights are being attacked, um, we are not being, at least we're not being bombed. So, uh, and to actually have to have that come out of my mouth is a ridiculous thing to say. Um, so we do have, and we also have Chiron in Aries. Um, in fact, the United States Chiron is in Aries. And this year we're in the middle of our Chiron return. So uh, that's also a consideration. But this really, the North Node in Aries is asking us to be ourselves, to find, to figure out who we are and to stand up for who we are, okay? At the same time with the South Node in um, Libra, we're being asked to renegotiate our relationship contracts. What ways of relating no longer serve you? Let them go. What relationships no longer serve you? Let them go. So there is a moving towards uh, our authentic selves and uh, a releasing of, uh, in, a, in a certain way with, with um, Libra on the South Node, um, social expectations of how we're meant to be. Uh, it's much more of uh, we are moving through a new experience with that with that North Node in uh, in Aries, and then we can't forget Saturn uh, in Pisces and Neptune, the ruler of Pisces, in the last degree of Pisces. Now Neptune is not going to leave um, Pisces this year. It's gonna it's gonna uh, step into Aries next year for a, for a little mo for a moment or two and then go back into Pisces it, these lo these uh, longer periods of time with these with these transpersonal very slow moving planets when they change signs it takes about two or three years sometimes for them to fully move into the sign and we've seen that with Aquarius because Aquarius now I mean with Pluto because Pluto's in Aquarius right now it's been in it was in Capricorn at the beginning of the year and move back into Aquarius. It's going to move for the last time back into Capricorn, but we've been we've been sort of dancing this dance between Capricorn and Aquarius for about two years now, and so by the end of this year, the twentieth of um, November, Joe Biden's birthday, Pluto is going to move out of Capricorn, and we're not going to see Pluto and Capricorn for two hundred and um, maybe thirty years. And I I'm not going to be here, so. We might be together in some other way, but uh, so this is this is the end of that um, that period of time, which of course began in 2008 when when Pluto moved into Capricorn. 
But really what I want to talk about with this, this um, um, portal is the plethora or preponderance of uh, Gemini energy. And yesterday in the new moon, I said, you know, five planets in Gemini is like having five uh, twins, five, five sets of twins. How do you manage that? Right. Everybody is talking to everybody. Gemini is about communication. And the other interesting thing is on the tree of life. And I'm just going to go back to that shortly here. On the tree of life, Gemini sits right here on this path. And this uh, this path is associated with the number six. So not only is six, six a portal when the sun's in Gemini, but six on the tree of life, the vibration of six is on the path of Gemini. And it goes from um, the, the Sephiroth of um, Saturn, which is Baina. Baina is the divine feminine. And the path takes you to Tipereth, which is the sun, S-U-N-S-O-N. -S and Tipereth is connected to the heart chakra. Baina is connected to the third eye. And so these are the two chakras activated through just Gemini on the tree of life. And then vibrationally, we connect our solar plexus with the earth, our solar plexus with the root. And so there is a simultaneously activation of the third eye. What do you see? And the heart, what do you feel? What, what, what do you open to, right? That's the higher sense of this portal. The lower sense of this portal is having your will on put, put it onto the earth. But ultimately, if we want to go by the, the vibration or by the by the hint of the, the tarot card, what the tarot card is saying is that spirit is here for us in this time of great upheaval. And spirit, if we connect to our heart and our vision, we can be conduits of spirit on earth. We can create heaven on earth, but we first have to come to terms with our own sense of peace and our own sense of reason for being, right? What is that called? Reason de earth? Sorry, I'm not French, as you can tell. The other thing I want to point out is that the six numerologically is a vibration of community and responsibility to each other, okay? And mediation. And so we do really need to start to communicate with each other and not fight, but talk to each other, make connections, gather the facts. All these things are very Gemini energies. And that's, I think, what this portal uh, is reminding us. So now I'm going to be doing a card reading. I'll, I'll pull this down and we'll take a look um, at what is ahead for us or what we need to be paying attention to from the perspective of a card reading. Okay. All right, let's get, let's do this. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so I'll be using my Hermetic deck. I actually really like using this because it's in black and white. <laughs> and Gemini is in a way black and white. It's the pen and the paper, right? It's the it's the 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 darkest and the lightest. Very often symbols of Gemini or pictures of Gemini have the light twin and the dark twin. It really does point out our dual nature, our our heavenly light nature and our earthly dark nature, sort of the yin and yang. And it's the interaction and the balance of that that makes us function. So we can't have, we can't have one without the other. Okay, so uh, let me, uh, I'm just gonna uh, burn a little sage. Sage is, uh, as I learned from Ona yesterday in our, uh, in our thing, in our uh, new moon, is that sage is a mercurial herb. It's an herb associated with Gemini. And of course, the, even the word sage, the herb sage, the, uh, you know, it's, it's called sage and sage means wisdom. 
it's also a great way of clearing the air. Um, and certainly with all this Gemini energy, clearing the air is a good idea. In fact, I would suggest everybody, if you can burn a little sage, burn a little sage. If you can't, if you're in a situation where you can't burn things, uh, there's also sprays. You can just spray sage, right? They have uh, sprays with sage and that, and that you get the same uh, thing and it clears the air. Native Americans have used sage uh, in, from time immemorial to do that. Um, and it really does work as a, as a, a, a cleanser to, to dispel any sort of stuck or negative energy in your environment. Um, very often, if you are going to do a ceremony like a sweat lodge or any kind of, uh, if you if you if you're into, um, you know, having circles and stuff like that, like the pagans do, uh, they often use sage uh, before you go into the circle. It's almost like when you go in when you go into um, church and you do this with the holy water, it's like you're blessing yourself, you're cleansing yourself to go into that state of uh, communion with spirit. And Gemini really is a communion with spirit in in its way, um, and a way for us to access um, and connect. So uh, let's see what the cards have to say. What do we need to be aware of in the six six portal? What do we need to be aware of? I do want to do a special uh, happy birthday to Cash Peters. Hopefully he's not too embarrassed. Today is his birthday. Happy birthday, Cash. It's going to be great. All that Gemini. And uh, also Jack Smith birthday. Jack Smith. Uh, I will do a reading on Jack Smith at some point. Uh, I don't know if I'll get to it today, uh, but I do want to take a look at Jack. Uh, although it doesn't look like anything's going to happen until uh, maybe um, after the election with him, but we'll see. All right, let's go. We have the King of Cups, the King of Cups. And the King of Cups uh, is, uh, any of the kings deal with our dominion over whatever element that the, the king is holding. And of course, the king is holding the cup. And this is our feelings, our emotions. And so this is having, having control perhaps over your emotions on some level um, or or making decisions based on, you know, the king of cups is the, is the, is the, the king who uh, rules from the heart. It's a compassionate king in its best sense. And, you know, uh, it, not every king comes from there, but this is uh, that energy. Let's see what challenge is that. The five of wands, it's called the Lord of strife in this uh, deck. And of course, this is all the argumentation that we have going on, all the different ideas. It is wands, it is fire. People are all fired up. The North Node and Eris and Mars and 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 all of this and Chiron. So people are coming from both a, a place where they are attempting to heal their wounds and also a place of their wounds. So that is something to consider. Let's see what's at the root of this. The three of wands, this is, I love this card, one of my favorite cards. This is the 2911 vibration. The, the 2911 is the vibration of light. This is the birth of light. This is, uh, this is found, threes are about manifestation, you know, threes of charm and all that. Ready, set, go, mother, father, um, um, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, like the Trinity, right? The energy of the Trinity and the energy of sort of coming together and birthing something new. So this is, and we can see that these wands are being held together by the, the I would call this the hand of God. Uh, and so we're being held together and we're being held accountable. This is a an Aries vibration card. And of course the North Node is an Aries asking us to figure out who are you? Who are you? You are spirit having a human experience. In the past, we have the fool. That means that we have come to a place we have never been before. There was a, a leap of faith, perhaps a foolish action, or we've been taken to a new place. This card is associated with Uranus. And of course, Uranus right now 
is still in Taurus. It just had that conjunction to Jupiter last month. But this can also be uh, Donald Trump, who's very much a Iranian uh, archetypical figure, somebody who comes in and disrupts. But in that, in the process of that, we do have uh, sort of stepping into a whole new world. So we're already in the new world. <laughs> it's not like we're stepping in. We've, we've already stepped in. In the sky, we have the Ace of Swords. This is the Justice card. So this is a reminder that justice, justice comes. Justice comes. This is a one vibration in the system I use. It's a 55 one in the system I use, and 55 is a master number. But 55 is also a number of change. So this reminds us that with the decisions, being made, change is here and change is coming. And of course, well, it's all about change, isn't it? We have the four of pentacles in the immediate future. This is, this is I think, counseling us to find our stability. This can be financial stability for some, but just generally stability what are you building your life upon? And this is asking you to create a firm foundation. So whatever information comes in through this portal is asking you take this information and create a firm foundation, one that you can stand on, one that you can depend upon. How it's seen from the outside, uh, secrets being revealed. This is direct spiritual connection. On the tree of life, this is the path that connects the crown to the heart through the middle pillar, okay? And so this is an uncovering and an unveiling. This is Isis unveiled. Things are being shown to us. Things are, we, we are coming to understand perhaps that we're not alone. And for some, that could mean, oh, we there are aliens about, for some it can mean I do have a spiritual connection. I am not alone in this world, right? Mm -hmm. So there is an uncovering happening in the domestic system. Uh, in the domestic situation, we have peace. This is a call to peace. This is a call to to uh, cross to cross the swords, but not like stab each other, right? <laughs> So it does seem like there is some justice coming through this through this energy. Um, <clears throat> and also, if we want to see peace in the outer world, this is reminding us that peace begins at home, right? Remember when you were a kid and you used to hear charity begins at home? Well, peace begins at home. And so find the peace within your own space, within, within your own place, whether that be uh, with, with with your family or maybe you live alone, just a piece of your environment. So I think it's real important to do whatever you can do to bring a sense of order and peace into your uh, day, excuse me. My alarm went off. I'm, I'm always awake when that alarm goes off, but I like the music, so I leave it on. Hopes and fears, the princess of wands. This is messages from spirit. This is the messenger. And uh, if you're hoping for messages, well, you just need to open your ears for messages, okay? And we have the Hierophant as the outcome. This is knowledge. This is ancient wisdom. This is also the small, still voice within. This is a a Taurus card. So this sort of harkens back to that. I think that Jupiter uh, Uranus conjunction in Taurus. So you can look back and say that occurred at uh, 20, I think 24 degrees of Taurus. So if you have a planet at 24 degrees of Taurus, or if you have, you know, where 24 degrees of Taurus sits in your chart, that's an awakening. That's the, that's the point of awakening. All right, let's see what's underneath it. We have the universe, the end of an old system and the beginning of a new. So we are at the end of an old way of being. The princess of swords. This is the truth seeker. The princess of swords uh, is really the um, 
I, you know, sometimes it's seen as a spy in the camp, but what I see her, this is an heiress energy really in its way, but I always see her as, uh, you know, when Jesus went into the temple and uh, upturns the, uh, all the, the commerce that was happening in a, in a place of spirit, it's a, it's a cleaning out, so to speak, of the less desirable energies um, that invade that we call spirituality but that are really um, something of a of the lower nature reminding us you know she does wield the sword of justice even though sometimes she's she or he depending you know it's a page it is connected with the feminine though it is connected with the daughters and this could very well be the the female the rising king of swords who has dominion over good judgment so um it does really seem to me that these cards are indicating to us that despite the upheaval that we are already in a new vibration and that we just need to attend to our own uh, sense of balance, our own sense of uh, what is right and what is fair, it is really an energy of coming from um, aligning ourselves with spirit, right, right down the center of the tree. The high priestess is on this path. Gemini is on this path and the vibration the 20 over two is that is oops sorry <laughs> it's on this path we need to turn it around it's hard anyway that is the story morning glories all right well if it's any consolation we are already there we are already whole and full uh and just this is working. Uh, we just have to have faith and patience and uh, and focus on what makes you uniquely you and what what can you contribute to this beautiful symphony of life to make the world a better, more balanced, a more loving place. Have yourself a wonderful 6-6 six, six portal day, and I will see you again soon. Take care, everyone. Much love. Namaste.